Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's game development and game design information session. Uh, we are going to uh, kick off the event here officially in just a, a minute or two. Uh, before I do, uh, I'd just like to go over a, a few quick housekeeping items with everyone. So uh, in the room that we're in here today, uh, in the bottom right corner, there's a chat area. Uh, so everyone is welcome to chat with each other. You can send us messages throughout the presentation. There's also a questions tab down there. Um, now, we encourage everyone to fill in questions throughout the presentation as well. And then ideally, what we're going to do is do a little bit of audience Q&A at the end of the session. So uh, if we are ignoring those questions throughout the presentation, I promise we're doing it only with the intent to come back and do a live Q&A with you and with everyone together at the end there. So uh, that's the, uh, the questions. There's also polls down there. So everyone, uh, I think I've dropped a couple, uh, two polls in there. So feel free to, to fill those in as I'm presenting too. And then just the people. So you can kind of see all the people in the room as they are coming and going. Uh, one really important thing to note for today's presentation is that it will be fully recorded and emailed out to everyone afterwards. So um, I'll probably repeat that a couple times because usually people kind of come in and, and uh, a little bit later on after we've gotten uh, started already. So I will mention that again, but yeah, uh, everyone in the room is welcome to kind of relax. Uh, you can uh, sit back, you can just watch the presentation, and then you can get all of the information recording. Uh, you, you're of course welcome to take notes or screenshots or whatever else you like uh, if, if you decide to, but uh, yeah, you, you will get a recording there. So, so um also i will invite everyone to share in the chat where they are joining us from uh bernie arman hello hello i can see your messages over there um, i am personally joining from uh, calgary alberta canada i am originally from niagara falls ontario um canada canada side canadian side and i was just uh, visiting there and uh toronto uh, a couple of weeks ago actually visiting my family and some friends and stuff there so uh, Toronto, Vancouver, Toronto, London, Toronto, uh, Florida. Nice. Welcome, everybody. California. Good. It looks like we're going to have a good mix of locations for today's event, uh, which does make sense because our course, uh, gaming courses are available through uh, quite a few of our university partners in both Canada and the US here. So that does not shock me. Edmonton. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's when I don't think I've ever been to Cincinnati. I've been to so many places in, in the US uh, and I've certainly never been to Venezuela. That's on my list as well. So welcome, Louis, Daniel. Hello, Peru. Nice, nice in Peru. So yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, I will go ahead and uh, get the presentation officially kicked off here. Um, and then, like I said earlier, we're going to do some audience uh, Q&A at the end. So if you guys have any questions throughout the presentation, just go ahead and throw them in the questions tab and uh, then we will circle back. I feel like this is really close to my face. There we go. Okay. All right. So without further ado, I will kick this off here. I'll start off by introducing myself. Um, oh, and my, uh, for some reason, the program didn't pick it up properly. That's supposed to say Tyler Trapp. It does in the presentation, but on my name where I'm talking, that shouldn't say Tyler Staff. That should say Tyler Trapp. So just, uh, Ignore, ignore the fact that it's a staff is my last name. That is not my last name. So my name is Tyler Traub. I am the marketing events manager at CircuitStream. I've been with this company uh, for just about three years. I always say this, but I feel like my anniversary has got to be coming up here soon. It's some sometime in uh, June or July. And uh, before that, I worked in hotels and hospitality, tourism, and uh, kind of shifted over to tech education uh, around the COVID times, the lovely COVID times. So uh, so that's a little bit on me. Uh, we will have a, a great guest speaker joining us today, and I'm going to invite him up on stage in a few minutes. Uh, his name is Chris, and he is a student uh, slash graduate from our game development boot camp. Uh, he's kind of in the process of uh, getting near the end of it in the final presentation. So I'll let him uh, share some of that as he's up on stage in a little bit. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to share some details about the presentation, about us at CircuitStream, uh, about the gaming industry, and then we can invite them up there. So uh, in today's presentation, you're going to learn how you can break into the gaming industry as both developers and designers uh, without having to have any prior experience. Uh, earning certifications is an, is an amazing way to do this as it allows you to expand your knowledge and skills, gain credibility, and get a competitive advantage um, 
through a connected community, basically. So that's uh, some of the benefits of the uh, the bootcamp. I'm going to share some details on that, or the boot camps, I should say, for develop, development and design. Uh, a little bit on Circuit Stream. So we began in 2015 through a network of developers and designers and creators. And we are now a leading provider of technology learning in game development and design, uh, augmented, reali uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, UX design, product management, and software development. Uh, we partner with leading industry uh, companies and educational institutions to offer courses and training to those looking to learn more about emerging technologies. So uh, just a, a handful of some of our corporate partners on the left-hand side there. And then on the right, you can see our university partners are listed there as well. So a little bit on us. Uh, CircuitStream takes pride in its consistent and positive feedback and reviews uh, that we receive from our students. Uh, we currently have a 4.3 trust pilot rating and 92% of our job seeking students utilized our bootcamp student career services in the uh, previous cohorts here. In terms of the course outcomes, 92% of all of our 2022 and 2023 graduates found employment in relevant roles and 25 of them achieved that milestone before they even completed the course, which is pretty cool. A little bit more on bootcamp learning. So structured bootcamps maintain high quality, consistent teaching standards and provide organized curriculums that allow for a smooth progression from basic to advanced concepts. Uh, students in bootcamps benefit from direct feedback from experienced instructors, uh, which is crucial for grasping and understanding complex skills and overcoming learning hurdles, uh, complex skills, things like coding, things like that. So. Uh, now Unity. So why why learn Unity? Um, I guess I'll start with you know what is what is Unity and why should developers learn to use it? Uh, Unity is the primary tool that we use in our game development bootcamp, and it is one of the world's leading platforms for creating and operating interactive real time three D content. You can use it to create games, visualizations, immersive experiences, and more. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, seventy percent of the top one thousand mobile games were made with Unity and there are Unity creators currently located all around the world. So again, uh, if anybody joined here a little bit afterwards, I'm uh, just gonna quickly mention, as soon as I see some stats on the screen, I like to shout this out again. Uh, this full presentation will be recorded and sent out to everyone's email after the event. So feel free to write down any of these numbers if you want. You can take pictures on your phone, you can screenshot on your computer, you can do, do any of that, but uh, you will get a recording after, so you, don't, you can just kind of relax if you want to too. And uh, oh, in, in case anyone came in after, I see that there is something in the questions tab. I can't, I can't see the question quite yet, but uh, we are going to loop back and do some questions at the end there. So feel free to, to populate those and we'll do audience Q&A together at the end here. So um, now on screen, these are a few examples of some games made using Unity, uh, Pokemon Go, Beat Saber, Monument Valley, just to name a few. I'm also gonna share uh, the spring 2024 Unity sizzle reel as well. It highlights some of the standout Unity games so far this year. Uh, there's probably even been a few since this video because now this, this video is a couple months old. Uh, apologies uh, if it skips or delays at all. Uh, sometimes the video on these live streams can be a little bit choppy and sometimes it's beautifully smooth. So um, we'll cross our fingers and hope it's, it's not long videos. It's only like a minute and a half here. But um, yeah, this is the spring 2024 Unity sizzle reel.
right. So yeah, that was the the spring sizzle reel from Unity. Um, super inspiring. It's always fun to kind of see the uh, the different games and um, yeah, Bonnie, that's uh, that's right. It's uh, it's really cool to see it. It's it's neat to just kind of see what uh, what people can develop with these tools. So speaking of the tools, I'm now going to share a little bit about Unreal. Um, so Unreal Engine is the primary tool that we use in our game design bootcamp. So we're using Unity mostly in the development and then Unreal in the design. Um, Unreal was designed by Epic Games in 1998 and is another le leading uh, global platform used for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content and has a comprehensive suite of tools for game designers and developers to use. Uh, over 50% of the next generation games are being built in Unreal Engine. And on screen, you can see some examples of the games that are being created in Unreal. Um, I, I have a personal connection with Unreal. It's uh, this is this ages me more than anything, more than the gray hair on the side of my head, I guess. But uh, I played the original Unreal tournament game uh, that came out through the uh, the first Unreal Engine back in 1998, leading into the early 2000s, and that was like my first big game. So I, I love uh, anything with Unreal now too. So. Uh, so I'm similar to Unity. I'm going to share the 2024 Unity, sorry, 2024 Unreal Sizzle Reel. Um, and this is just some of the, the highlights uh, from this year. Uh, and again, I do apologize if this one's choppy at all here. Creation, elevation, bending space and time. A whole new reality. A whole new reality. Oh, Amazing. So yeah, so that's the uh, the Unreal Sizzle Reel from earlier this year. They actually uh, showcased this at the Game Developers Conference in San Fran. And we had uh, some of our Circuit Stream team at that conference. So uh, they probably saw it when they were there too. So, uh, so yeah, so that's a little bit more on Unreal. Uh, now I'm going to look a little bit more into the industry and some of the career opportunities uh, in, in gaming overall. And I'll share that information here with you guys. Uh, so why launch a career in the gaming industry? Uh, becoming a game developer or designer can be an extremely rewarding career uh, for individuals who are passionate about gaming and for those who have a flair for creative and interactive experiences, problem solving, and just technology in general. Uh, on screen, you can see a few of the, the top reasons why people would choose to work as game developers and as game designers. Uh, and again, I'll show, just mention this too. This full uh, presentation will be recorded. I can see we've got a few more bodies in the room here too. So everyone's going to get a copy of this in their email after. So um, opportunities in the gaming industry. So in the U.S., there are over 3,000 game studios employing almost 300,000 people. And in Canada, there's been tremendous growth over the last few years with over 900 active game studios, uh, which is a 35% increase since 2019. 
Uh, not only that, the game industry contributed to over $5 billion in Canada's GDP, which is a 29% increase over just the last four years. So uh, an incredible amount of growth. And I should say too, I, I noticed there was a few people in the audience here from uh, outside of North America. Most of my stats and information here is North America specific, um, but you know, arguably there's there's countries in the world that have massive gaming uh, sectors that are, you know, separate from North America, even too. So in terms of opportunities, I'm, I'm just sharing some details for North America, but there is uh, a huge amount of global opportunity for, so for the folks who are like in Venezuela, or I think you're in Ohio now, but Peru and, um, just a few different locations that might be outside of North America, just know there's, there's a ton of opportunity there too. You can actually connect with our team after the event, if you like, and we can probably provide some more details on that too. So, uh, so yeah, so this is a little bit, um, in the U S here and in Canada, um, as a game designer, you have the power to shape new, exciting games. The average salary for game designer is 120,000 per year in the U S and in Canada. Um, there are a range of different job titles in this field. So things like game designer, level designer, systems designer, etc. cetera. Um, just to give you a little bit of an example there, uh, in terms of game developers, there are currently over 8,000 job openings for game developers in the United States alone. Uh, with the average salary sitting at about 121,000 annually. Uh, so now, of course, just based on the uh, the stats from the, the previous slide in this one, it's uh, it's a great time to get into the industry. Uh, some of the different titles for game developers would be, you know, game developer, of course, uh, but things like game engineers, game programmers, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, just things you'd be looking for once you're looking to kind of break in your roles. Um, these are just a few of the many companies that hire for positions that were mentioned on the previous slides. Uh, many well-known companies such as EA Games, Rockstar, Epic Games, they're all hiring in this space, but there's also a massive amount of smaller indie game studios like Cloudhead Games and Extremely OK Games, uh, and just, you know, there's, there's tons of them, and they are also hiring in this space as well. Um, sometimes it's even easier to break into the uh, the smaller indie studios because there's kind of less, um, you know, things, hoops to jump through to get in, in the door. Um, and also a lot of those smaller studios do a lot of hiring for internships uh, for new students too. So, uh, and we are actually partnered with some of these companies shown on screen here too. So some more of our partners. Uh, there's also a lot of top, top companies hiring for remote positions in 2024. Uh, all of these companies shown on screen have had remote career positions posted within the last two months. Um, yeah, just to give you kind of an idea of some of the, the top companies that are, are actively hiring for remote work. Uh, we do get that question a lot through our admissions team, and I just like to highlight that during the presentations that there's certainly opportunities to work in studio, but there's also still a ton of opportunity for remote work, uh, especially after coming through COVID. It's it kind of changed the face of that a little bit. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and share some information on the actual boot camps here. So we have two six-month gaming boot camps, and I will start off with the game design boot camp. So our game design bootcamp is designed for those who want to enter the gaming industry as a designer, uh, want to establish their own company, or utilize game design skills in their current role. Uh, the great thing about this bootcamp is that it is project-based, so you'll gain practical skills while working on real-world projects. Over the course of 30 weeks, you'll learn how to analyze game design elements, conceive gameplay concepts, design game mechanics, create functioning game prototypes, test and uh, oh, and test novel gameplay ideas. Uh, you'll also get uh, to learn about the role of a game designer and its various specializations and how they fit into video game production overall. So that's a little bit on the 30-week uh, game design bootcamp. Uh, the game development bootcamp, the Unity Game Development Bootcamp, is designed for those looking to get into the gaming industry as a developer, uh, those looking to start their own companies, or those looking to bring Unity development skills into their current roles, uh, all of which, all of those scenarios are quite popular for our students. Uh, this course is completely beginner friendly, the same same as the design one, uh, but this one does tackle some advanced concepts as you progress. I mean, they both do, but this one in particular, uh, a little bit more, I guess, with the coding side of things, because, uh, you know, coding is, uh, is something that's a little bit more challenging for true beginners sometimes. So, uh, but this this course is built that way. It's built for, for beginners to come in. You don't have to have any prior experience. Uh, if you do, then the first few weeks will probably be a little bit of a refresher for you just because, you you know, you might have some of those skills. Uh, the other thing is that we teach in C Sharp. So if you have any uh, skills that are from other coding languages, uh, the cool thing is, is that those skills are transferable and it's much easier to learn a new coding language if you already know some other ones there too. So um, 
Yeah, so the uh, the bootcamp is project based. You'll learn concepts in class and apply them to real life projects. You get to create your own idea as the final assignment, and you can work together as a team uh, to do this, or you can work on it uh, on your own from start to finish using these skills that you learn throughout the course. Uh, some people do a little bit of both for their final presentations too. Uh, our students really enjoy this aspect of the course because it allows them to build up portfolio projects and demonstrate the skills that they have learned. Uh, so when you finish this course, the course, you don't just have the skills, but you actually have a little list of portfolio projects that you completed as you learn the lesson. So. Uh, now, I've already mentioned Unity and Unreal, but there's uh, quite a few other tools listed here that we would use in the boot camps. It's uh, important to note that we are always iterating on the course materials and the tools to ensure that they are the most up to date with what is currently being used in the industry. Uh, so you may see some additional tools added in or swapped out if you have previously taken a course with us. Uh, we found that uh, having experience with Unity and Unreal, though, um, those in particular, definitely helps set our students apart from the competition. So. Uh, these are just some other tools there. There's probably even some new ones that we've, we're adding right now that I haven't uh, factored in yet. So, uh, And then when you finish the courses, as I mentioned, you'd be finishing with a portfolio of projects to demonstrate the skills that you've learned. Um, but you'll also finish the course um, uh, with the certifications there. So by enrolling in the uh, boot camps, you also get access to our private community on Discord, which has over 1,200 members. Uh, the community is a great place to network and to get help on projects, ask questions, uh, find out about career opportunities, or just connect with like-minded people. Uh, the best part is that you can continue to be a part of this community even after the course has ended. And our game development bootcamp graduates also have access to an additional certification through Unity, which we worked on Unity, uh, work with Unity to help create the certification through Unity too, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the certification cost is included in our bootcamp. And the bootcamp education prepares uh, students to write the exam once they've finished it. So once you take the development bootcamp and you've completed the course, you'll get certification through us, which is also Unity certification. It's important to note, uh, but you can get an extra level of um, certification directly through through Unity on top of that, which is included in the cost. So normally you'd have to pay um, the extra. I think it's, yeah, it's about 450 for this one. So. Now, speaking of career development support, I am going to invite uh, Wanai, uh, Circuit Stream Student Outcome Manager on stage. Uh, she provides career support to all of our bootcamp students, and she's going to share some information about that. So welcome, Wanai. All right. Hi, Tyler. Um, I'm just wondering if you can hear me. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So all of our bootcamps are structured with ample career support and guidance. The Circuit Stream um, Career Labs teach students how to leverage technical and behavioral strengths, gain awareness of the digital ecosystem, create some compelling portfolios, elevate digital presence, um, learn how to network effectively, as well as become interview ready for um, industry jobs. Um, and I see that Julie, you had uh, asked um, that, uh, uh, that question there. So, um, I hope that that answers you a little bit. And um, our career and networking support really sets our programs apart from others that you may find. Every student has different objectives coming in, but those that are looking for new jobs or to improve their current positions find these, this aspect of the course to be incredibly helpful. In fact, 92% of our 2022 to 2023 game development graduates utilized our career services support. As part of the career support, our boot camps also come with student pitch day, which happens towards the end of the program. Students have the opportunity to showcase their capstone projects to hiring and industry partners. This event is an amazing way to add uh, people to your network, be considered for any job openings that they may have, or to just receive feedback on your projects from hiring managers working in the industry. Oops. Got to jump on that one. Sorry, when I. All right, sorry. <laughs> this is a. Uh, I'll just. I'll. I'll intro this. This is just a little preview um, of a game from one of our former students, and it's their their capstone project. It's. It doesn't show the full game inside and out, but we just wanted to give you guys a quick little preview. And uh, this was my fault. I changed around the uh, the scripting there when I. So my apologies. <laughs> uh, so here, I'll go ahead and play this for us. <laughs> There we go. 
just a quick little little preview of one of our students capstone projects which is really fun and cute so um all right so um i think I'm just going to share this part as well here uh, when I we also have private AMA sessions ask me anything sessions that are exclusive to our students and our alumni community. Uh, in these sessions students get to network and interact with industry specialists giving them real world information on how to successfully break into gaming, as well as inside information on what hiring managers are looking out for. And uh, confirmed for 2024 so far. Uh, we've had uh, amazing companies like unity and keyword studios game breaking studios. And we have uh, quite a few on deck from other companies like Riot Games, Ubisoft, uh, Electronic Arts, you know, just uh, some great companies there. So yeah, that's these sessions happen for our uh, students. It is uh, exclusive to our students and our alumni community. Uh, just some some cool uh, uh, add-ons there. So uh, thank you so much when I I, uh, <laughs> I flipped around the uh, the format of this presentation. This is totally my fault uh, when I would normally still be presenting this part, but uh, thank you so much when I... <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and invite today's guest speaker up on stage. Uh, Chris is one of our game development bootcamp students, and I'm going to ask him some questions about his course experience and what he is up to now. So welcome to the stage, Chris. Yeah, hi, Tyler and everyone. And uh, Chris, I'm going to warn you, I'm going to make your screen big. So it's just going to flip the size here. So just so you don't get shocked yeah. when it changes size there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I always okay. shock people when I do it and I don't warn them. Um, all right. So uh, first question I've got for you, Chris, is um, it's a fun one. What do you enjoy uh, about gaming and what is your favorite game? Yeah, I enjoy gaming a lot because I get a lot of satisfaction from getting all those game achievements. And I also think that gaming is a very good way to hang up with friends and families and connect with other people. And recently, like the most favorite game for me is Elden Ring. It's an open world Souls game that you can explore the, the world freely and fight different bosses. Nice. Yeah, I haven't done that one yet, but I've heard really good things. So. Yeah, it's a really good game. That was uh, my most recent one has been Fortnite and I've kind of, I've backed away from that for a little bit, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, what initially attracted you to the game development bootcamp? Yeah, because I said I love about gaming and I always want to become a game developer, but I kind of lost and I didn't know where to start. So I think joining a bootcamp is a very good starting point for me. And I think it's a really good platform for me to learn with others to do. And I can also get some good support from the bootcamp if I have encountered any problems from it. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Um, now, did you have any coding experience going in? And uh, even if you did, did you find that the bootcamp kind of paced that part uh, well for people who would be a little bit more of a true beginner? Yeah, I have a coding background before I go into the bootcamp. But I think uh, the bootcamp is very beginner friendly. They just teach you about all those coding concepts uh, step by step. You don't need to worry about you have no experience before. Even though if you are stuck in the code, then you can just ask in the class. It's very, uh, it's a very freely uh, and atmosphere for the class. Perfect. Oh, and just a quick question popped in there. I mean, just to remind everyone, we'll do the official questions at the end for Q and A. But just to answer that quick for you, Josh. Uh, Chris took the game development one, so the uh, the coding would be a little bit more connected or uh, entirely more connected to the development. There's no coding on the design one there, but. And uh, Chris, out of curiosity, did you know C sharp coding before you started, or was that language new for you? Uh, I didn't learn a lot in C sharp programming, but uh, is because I have a coding background, it's easier for me to pick up that. Perfect. But yeah, it's still easy for those who have. Uh, I know some classmates from my class; they have no experience before, but they find oh, it's not that hard to follow up. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's just like learning a new language, right? It's uh, yes. some people pick it up easier than others, but it's like similar to like uh, Italian and Spanish. If you if you know one of those, and it's a little easier to pick up the other yeah, one yeah. as well. So cool. Okay, so um, can you explain how your day to day looked while you were in the boot camp, and roughly kind of like how many hours per week did you dedicate to the the studies? Yes. So while in the boot camp, like the class is happening on Tuesday and Thursday. And sometimes occasionally there will be some lab session or career lab session workshop 
on Wednesday. And then apart from that, I would try to do my assignment like as soon as possible because there is um, couples of them and there is some midterm projects as well. And also I would try to prepare the class beforehand because I would try to I would get to know what I was going to learn so that I wouldn't get lost during the class. And I would say around about putting 15 to 20 hours per week in the bootcamp. That's what I imagined it was going to be. So I'm happy to hear that was your answer. Yeah. <laughs> now, the other thing too, I mean, uh, you can always spend more time than that if you want to. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. of course. It's just for, you know, for people in the audience, if uh, if you want to, you can always like take the skills you learn and go practice all you want, you know, in your, in your own time too. But that's the probably the rough like time estimate that would be kind of needed to do the course there. Um, all right. So uh, what are the core areas or topics that were covered in the bootcamp? I think it's first start with a very basic of Unity, like, of course, install Unity, and then try to set up for that, like, uh, and try to learn and navigate Unity, like which button to press to uh, control mm -hmm. Unity. And you start from very basic concepts, like creating those uh, primitive game objects. And then you will have some introduction to the C sharp programming. And then you will get to a more advanced topic, um, like the data data structures and the algorithms of the programming. And then you will try to learn all those uh, game structure and developments too, so that you can know how you can develop a structure game. And also we will learn some networking concepts like the API and the multiplayer features, and also some optimization techniques to optimize your game. And you will finish up the bootcamp by a capstone project. And we're, I'm going to share some links here too, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, so if you want to go to any of the websites, whether it's our university partners or circuitstream.com, in fact, if you want, you can just go to circuitstream.com right now. And if you click through the course options uh, and click the game development or the game design, you can request the, the course syllabus and it'll give you everything that Chris just said, but it's going to break down each of those sections even further. So feel free to um, to go to circuitstream.com if you want to look at that stuff during the presentation here. I think you can request it and it goes right to your email. So you, you should get it within a minute or two. Um, but outside of that, I'm going to share some links later on here for everyone as well. And uh, Chris, there is a question here in terms of your yes. previous education. Did you, where, where did your coding experience before the bootcamp come uh, from? I have a bachelor degree in computer science. So I have a, I have a good coding background, to be honest. Hopefully, Bernie, that uh, that helped there. I was just uh, wanted to answer that one quick for you because I saw it pop up. Um, okay, so uh, can you describe some of the benefits uh, that a structured bootcamp would provide uh, versus trying to teach yourself uh, game development online if you were doing it on your own? <laughs> yeah, I think the main difference is knowing what to learn first because um, there are so many tutorials in the in the online, maybe like those YouTube tutorials. I think having in the bootcamp can give me a good pace to learn everything step by step. Because if you learn it like watching those YouTube tutorials, you may find that, oh, you get to some points that you they expect you to know something, but you don't. And then you may get stuck to it. And also because there is so many videos about that, there are many different setup for the Unity. But if you attend the bootcamp, you will do learn everything in a similar environment. So you will have a smooth learning experience from that. Yeah, you get lots of support in the boot camps. And something else I hear too is um, I've had so many students connect with our team and say, you know, I, I tried to do this on my own and, and you know, just see what I, how far I could get on my own before I, I decided to do the boot camp. And I ended up, you know, learning the complete wrong things or paying so much time yeah. or, you know, in one wrong area, so, which is kind of what you were saying there. Yeah, so, because like uh, if you if you watch those videos, you can't ask the ask the creators some question about that. Yeah. Well, you, you could comment watch. and hope they get back to you. Yeah, eventually. yeah, yeah. That's the so, that's the best side from learning it yourself. Totally. Amazing, amazing. Okay. And then um were there opportunities? I think you you touched on this a little bit already, but were there some opportunities for network in uh, networking and connecting during the bootcamp? I think there is a lot of opportunities for me to connect with uh, different people. And um, apart from my classmate, I think you can also check in the Discord channel. We have a Discord server for our community, 
and you can chat with them or even try to collaborate with them to make some game projects. Like uh, I've actually joined, um, partner with my classmate or other people to make some game gen projects or other game projects. Yeah. I think it really helps from, with your experience. It really depends on whether you reach out to them. That's, I agree. And it, it, you know what, it's kind of a way too that you can utilize the skills that you guys are learning, but then be entirely creative. I mean, the course does give you quite a bit of creative freedom in terms of your capstone project, uh, but you can kind of just go off script entirely and say, hey guys, like I, I've always wanted to make this type of game and now I've learned some development skills and you've got design skills and we have so many students that kind of come together and, and build things and then they've submitted games to Steam a year later. And, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool process, so. Um, all right. So what else do we have here? Uh, how many, uh, sorry, how did regular feedback from the instructors and, uh, collaboration with peers enhance your learning experience? And I guess, how, how did you receive the feedback from your instructors throughout the course there too? Yeah, I think this is a really good thing about this bootcamp because, um, because the feedback is really helpful because, um, doing the class, actually you're not required to, uh, follow every step from the instructor. I would just trying to do my own approach. And then after that, I can share my work to the class and then we, I can discuss it with the class and my instructor will give some feedback. Oh, is this good or not? And then we'll try to like to discuss everything and then you can learn like which is a better way or not and try to think more about different approaches. Absolutely, Absolutely. and I can see uh, Hassan, that you you threw a question into the uh, the main chat there. Uh, not not at all a dumb question. It's actually a great a great question. Uh, so much so that I would ask, uh, could you copy it and paste it into the questions tab? And then at the end of the the session here, we'll loop back and I'll make sure that we answer that one for you and uh, everyone can kind of see. But not at all a bad question, Hassan. That's actually a great question. Um, all right. So, uh, did you? Oh yes. So. Uh, your opportunity, uh, I, I know the answer to this, but did you have the opportunity to work on a capstone project? Yes, I have uh, um, opportunities to work on a capstone project. I have partnered with my two classmates to make uh, to make the project, which is, it is called After the End. It is a Metroidvania is an inspired 2D platformer game. So you have different uh, movesets to uh, navigate the left with like running, jumping, or we have air store, which is stopping falling, uh, stop falling in the air. And you will try to encounter different enemies and maybe you need to defeat some bosses to, to complete, like to continue to, uh, exploring the world. Yeah. And so you're, you're working on that now. And uh, I believe this is what uh, we chatted about before, but your pitch day is coming up soon. Yeah. It's next week. So yeah, so what we were chatting about or what I was mentioning earlier in the presentation, I guess when I was probably talking about it a bit more, but uh, so all the students get the opportunity at the end of the course here to present their capstone projects to industry partners. Uh, so that is what Chris is preparing for right now, but maybe tell us a little bit about that. Like what's your process like getting, are you excited to present next week? Yeah, it's really exciting experience because I need to, um, I think this is the main reason, the big difference from uh, learning it yourself because if you're learning it yourself, you don't get this kind of opportunities to preparing for a presentation. Like I need to preparing the slide or the materials for the graduate book. And you need to learn how to promote yourself to the public and try to, trying to, to promote as a, in a professional way. Yeah, it's a really exciting experience for me. I'm excited to see your presentation too, especially after doing this with you now too. I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm more, more invested in your project, I guess, than any of the other students because I haven't met them yet. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see it. I'm going to join that uh, that presentation next week and watch. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's honestly, it's like the best way to get industry feedback from people. We have so many students that get contract opportunities or internships out of these presentations too. So um, I'm excited to see it next week for you as well. Chris. Um, all right, and um, considering your experience, this is the last question I've got here for you, Chris. Considering your experience, what sort of advice would you give to individuals who are interested in starting their own journey in game development uh, or design, I guess, but are considering enrolling in a bootcamp like this one? 
Yeah, I think just one simple advice with you, which is just try, just trying different things. Like I need to try different features, uh, try different buttons in Unity to see what they does, what they do, and ask questions like if you have encountered any problems. And also not just about learning the things, but also trying to reach out to others, like trying to talk with your classmate and maybe other people in the channel in the Discord channel. Or even try to join some events like the game jam events that is happening uh, maybe once a year. I'm not sure about the schedule, yeah. But also like uh, for those who are new to coding or programming, I think you need to try more try more about that so to have a more practice on it to get more familiar with it so that you know get like get more smooth while you are learning in the gaming industry because coding is a big part from it yeah absolutely i just i always tell people just like immerse yourself as much as you can um especially when you're going through fast paced kind of boot camps it's so good to to sign up for things like game jams like chris said or yeah. Um, I mean, even if you have opportunities, some people have uh, more opportunity depending on your location, but there, if there's any gaming conferences, like in-person conferences happening near you, and it makes sense if it works within your budget, those are great opportunities to kind of go and meet people in person and see some keynote uh, lectures, but there's also tons of free online things. I mean, even sessions like this today, uh, this is free through circuit stream, uh, for us to kind of share information about our boot camps, but we're also just sharing general industry information and all the people in here, all you guys in the chat, you guys can be networking with each other. You can be connecting. Uh, we've had lots of people connect through our, our sessions like this and even, you know, start working together in the future. Just didn't, didn't realize they were going to meet some people in a session like this. So get yourself out there as much as you can when you're doing stuff like this. Um, now, Chris, I am going to invite you back up in a few minutes here so that we can do some audience Q and A. Um, but before that, I'm just going to take a few minutes to share some details on the upcoming uh, cohorts for anybody in the audience, if they're interested in uh, registering or if they have any questions there. So, um, so I'll let I'll kick you off here for just a couple minutes, okay. Chris, yeah. and uh, and then you can hop back on, and we'll do the uh, the audience Q and A shortly. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll make this one big again. And I'll flip over here. So uh, yeah, so if anybody has any questions for Chris, throw those in the chat and we'll loop back at the end here in just a couple minutes. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna touch on the schedules and the course outcomes for everyone and uh, the pricing information, that kind of stuff. So uh, both of the, the gaming boot camps are 30 weeks and consist of five hours of live online instruction per week, uh, video, video, uh, via video conference and roughly 10 hours of independent study. Uh, the great thing to note is that these live sessions are also recorded similar to this, um, you know, event session today. So uh, if you, you're taking the bootcamp and you want to go back and review any of the notes that happened in the class, uh, if say the doorbell rang and you've got to go answer the door and you miss a few minutes, you can always go back and review all of that. Uh, in fact, you get lifetime access to the class recordings, materials, um, and our uh, Discord community there too. Um, so there's, I mean, there's tons of benefits for the boot camps. Um, in my opinion, if all they did was provide students with a possible career in the gaming industry, uh, they would be worth it. But I'm just going to share some of the additional benefits of these courses with everyone as well. Uh, so the boot camps come with 30 week, uh, 30 weeks of instructor led classes, uh, which include 12 technical and career labs and uh, 10 career one on one sessions. Uh, the boot camps provide uh, students with foundational game development and game design. Uh, core concepts. They allow students to create and develop comprehensive portfolios using their own ideas. Uh, they connect students uh, to a network of instructors and over 2,500 alumni. And as a part of the boot camps, we offer those uh, private AMA sessions that I, I mentioned earlier that uh, when I shared in her, her portion, or I guess I, I did that when I was uh, supposed to, but I, I accidentally took over that part. Uh, but as a reminder, here are the speakers that I mentioned before just that we had uh, on uh, lined up for this year. And as a quick reminder, these are the uh, key outcomes for the game development bootcamp. And I'm also going to share the pricing here. So um, these are the outcomes on the right. Uh, in terms of the 30 week bootcamp, uh, the regular price is $14,995. Uh, but there is an early bird rate on right now available until July 5th. So just worth it to kind of note um, that there is a uh, promotion in place. Uh, if anybody's looking at registering for the upcoming cohorts, 
uh, make sure that you mention this to the admissions team and they will make sure that you get the, uh, the early bird rate there, the 15%. And then this is, again, the uh, reminder of the outcomes for the game design boot camp. And similarly, uh, the pricing is the same with the, uh, the early bird 15% off. And then in terms of dates, we typically run the boot camps every five to six months or so. And the upcoming cohorts that we have for both development and design are running from September 17th of 2024 uh, straight through to uh, April 29th, I should say 2025 at the end of that. So we're certainly not going back in time here to April <laughs> from previous this year. So September 17th, 2024 to April 29th, 2025. My apologies for the, uh, the error in the, in the year there. Um, and if you are interested in securing spots uh, for these cohorts, I'm actually not sure how many we have left. Uh, these cohorts do fill uh, pretty quickly sometimes. So just reach out to our team and let us know. Um, this is the easiest way to find all of the course information for each of our partners and then directly through CircuitStream. Uh, so you can just click, uh, sorry, hover over any of these on screen and tap and it should take you to the corresponding uh, web page for either the university or through CircuitStream. Uh, we just shared in the chat the link just directly through CircuitStream. It's, uh, it's a lot of links to put all of these in here for you guys in the chat. So it's easier to just do the QR codes, but um, I guess we might be adding in a few. <laughs> but there is uh, just the main one. The Game Development Bootcamp is off to the right there. And uh, we'll see about adding in. Yeah, she's throwing in some, some, into the, some links into the chat, but these QR codes work. And then in terms of connecting to us, uh, the easiest way is just to uh, email admissions at circuitstream.com. Um, yeah, you can, you can also go through our website. I think there's live chat options and stuff. But if you just email admissions at circuitstream.com, then that's, that's the easiest way somebody here will get back to you for sure. And that is it. That is the official presentation. So I'll go ahead and uh, close this. I'll invite you back up on stage, Chris. And uh, we can take a look at the Q and A. Uh, let me close this one. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go hop over to the questions here and uh, hopefully between the two of us, we're able to answer all the questions. Um, if there is anything that we can answer, we will uh, just grab the information on our side here and we will reach back out to you from circuit stream to make sure you get that. So why is my camera so far? So uh, where can we find a list of your partnerships just to cross-reference? Um, honestly, the best person to connect with, with that for that would probably be one eye. Uh, she has a listing of all of our partnerships. Um, I think we're in the process of making some of those a little bit more visible on our website. So we're going to uh, create a, a section of the website that's going to show all of our industry partners for the different courses. Uh, right now, um, it kind of lives internally with us. Like we know who all the partners are. And then certainly the students would know if they are in pitch day and they see those companies coming through. But uh, Josh, that's probably the easiest way for us to do it. Like you can you can certainly pay attention to our website over the next few months as we get some of those updates put on. Uh, but if you wanted some information in advance, if you reach out to admissions at CircuitStream, uh, they can either connect with one eye and collect some of that uh, information for you and share it, uh, or they can just connect you directly with one eye and one eye can share some of that uh, that. Uh, information for you. I know we have different partners for our game development course, our game design, our UX course, our software course. It's uh, a whole bunch of different partners there. So, uh, so hopefully that helps uh, answer a little bit. So I don't, I don't have a, an active list just to kind of share with you on, on hand uh, right now, Josh. Um, so how can we navigate in today's job market in game dev industry, given the massive number of layoffs and the flood of senior level workers in the job market? Uh, what can we do to improve our odds during job applications? So there's, uh, I mean, there's tons of things you can do. We, we had a similar question earlier in the uh, presentation, and I know when I uh, shared some details about the career support that we offer through the bootcamp, um, that is a huge, huge portion of uh, what would be helpful for you. Because um, if you're doing it entirely on your own, uh, even if you go through university or college program solely and you're, you know, you've kind of finished the course, there usually isn't a whole lot of, if any, sort of career support for you. You kind of have to figure it out on your own and navigate. And this is where our course sets, uh, you know, boot camps in general probably set you a little bit uh, apart from that that learning style because it allows you to connect with individuals. It allows you to prevent uh, present on pitch day, um, to work with other students in the class, to ask instructors for feedback. Um, and the other cool thing is most of the instructors working for us are also working in, um, you know, full time capacities in those those trades or in those fields, you know. So they they can give you real world in, in advice and feedback. Um, 
where it's just a little bit different in a, in a college or university course, I guess. But uh, the other thing too, is there's a ton of things you can do to kind of help yourself set a, set yourself apart. Having portfolio of projects to demonstrate the skills that you have is huge. Um, we work with a lot of hiring partners and um, all the time, the, the uni unanimously, the feedback I get from them is if students can display what they know and prove that they know how to do that, um, then that's going to take them a long way. Um, you know, it's, if you've got university degrees, if you've got things, and those are also incredibly helpful as you're looking for jobs. But the reality is at the end of the day, they're trying to look at what your skills are and they're trying to see what you're, you're capable and competent to do. And if you have the uh, skill set that they need in their company, there's a really good chance that you would qualify for that job after taking the boot camp. So, um, th there's just some things you can do. You can be creative with your resume. You can create little mini games to kind of show off your skills. Um, you can, uh, create a website, display all of your, uh, projects through a website that way, if you want to, and, and share it. Um, you can do, you know, networking events. You can connect with individuals. The more people, you know, in the industry, the better always, uh, most people I know with job opportunities, uh, are educated, but a lot of them, uh, find opportunities through, uh, connections, you know, so it's, it's important to know people and, uh, sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to completely hijack this entire answer here, but yeah, if, there's, uh, if there's anything that you wanted to add in, I saw you nodding a couple of times. So I think you were in agreement. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, because like, I really like about this program is really about the career support because it really helps you build up your portfolio. Like, uh, not just from teach you how to do it, but also the course, like you try to do, do different game project game projects in the course, you can put them in your portfolio. So after the, the bootcamp, you already have a very good portfolio to show off to the others. Absolutely. Oh, and something else I can add, uh, Armand too, is that the, the layoffs, I mean, we, we saw a lot of layoffs kind of happening in all of the industries. Um, it's certainly not specific to gaming. Um, but there is still a ton of opportunity in the industry. It's probably just, you know, there's been over hiring during COVID in certain areas. There was a lot of online hires and some of that's balancing out. Um, and then actually from what I'm hearing is a lot of the senior level uh, roles or the people who've been in those ones for a long time, because they have the higher salaries and because they've been there for a while, they're actually the ones that are experiencing, experiencing a lot of the layoffs versus the new people who are kind of breaking in. So, you know, it's, there's lots of different ways to kind of look at it, but, uh, from my experience and my connections, you know, our, our conversations with hiring, uh, professionals in the industry, there's still a ton of opportunity out there. So don't, don't let that discourage you. I mean, you could probably get that same sort of discouragement looking at any industry and in layoffs right now. There's not that many that are, that are kind of protected from that. So it's, uh, you know, it, take it, take, take it with a grain of salt is what I usually say. And, uh, just stay connected and, and put yourself out there. There's, there's tons of opportunity. Um, okay. Uh, why did these boot camps teach different game engines? So, uh, we use, uh, unity. We started off with unity years ago. We're actually partnered with unity. That's where we started doing the game development. Um, and we, you know, like I said before, the, the skills are transferable, so we could, we could pick a different tool, but it's just kind of the one that we've, we've built our courses around and it works really well. It teaches the core concepts to students. So, uh, you know, kind of why fix something when it's not broken, I guess, in a, in a sense. But as we introduced the design course, we saw a huge um, need for incorporating Unreal into our courses as well. And on the design side, it worked really well. So it's uh, basically that's, we just have the, the Unreal on the design side and the Unity on the development side. You could basically scrap both of those tools and use completely different tools on both sides if you want to, but those are just the two that we kind of decided to go with. And we, we receive a lot of feedback that Unity and Unreal skills are in high demand on both sides. So just kind of, you know, we're, we're trying to incorporate some of the, uh, the most popular and most commonly used tools into our courses, but they would be a little different, I guess, just on, on both sides. There. So hopefully that out, that answers there, Walter. And Hassan, here's the question that I told you to share. So, uh, not, not a dumb question at all. Um, so you wanted to always make your own game, uh, you've got ideas and you just kind of don't know where to, to start learning design or, um, development kind of, it seems to be is your, your question. So this is probably one of the most common questions that we get at circuit stream. We, we hear it all the time. I'm, I'm passionate about this. I have a lot of interest in this. Um, I, I just have no idea where to start. So one thing I could say is if you go to our website and you request the syllabus from both the development course and the design course, and you just have a good look through, it's going to give you a good idea of what the courses will entail. 
But even before you do that, the, the, the best thing that you can do is just kind of figure out, are you a little bit more development or design oriented? Um, do you like math? Do you like coding? Uh, are you good with numbers? Are you, you know, with languages? Are you, is that, is that kind of a little bit more your skill set? Uh, or are you a little bit more on the creative side, the design side? You want to, you know, kind of control the experience, but not so much the, um, you know, coding to make a character move in this way as he moves across the screen sort of thing. So a um, little, or quite a bit of a difference between the two, but that's usually where I, I tell people to start. And honestly, I've, I've had, it's not super common, but I do often uh, or sometimes get people say, you know, I'm, I'm actually interested in both. Uh, and you can do both. You can learn both. We have lots of students that pick up development and design skills. Uh, my recommendation though is don't try and do them simultaneously. Maybe lean into what you're more interested in first because um, it certainly doesn't hurt to have a well-rounded understanding of both development and design. So if you're a designer and you know some development skills, it's going to help you communicate with developers way easier. It's going to help you do things, you know, across the board much easier. Um, and, and similarly with design. So just kind of figure out which one is a little bit more for you and which one you think aligns more with your interests and your skill sets or, you know, what skill sets you want to develop. Uh, take a look at the course syllabus for both. And then uh, that'll probably give you a really good good uh, uh, starting point. You can also just look online. There's probably there's probably YouTube videos or you know clips on TikTok. If you just search game developer versus game designer, what's better? It's gonna you know there's gonna be some stuff on there. People will kind of break down um, the benefits or the you know in their eyes what they think are the benefits for both. So give you give you a little bit more food for thought there. So yeah, uh, uh, I have some advice on this too because um, oh, this is the exact uh, exact. Uh, struggle that I have before, like when I try to choose the bootcamp that is game design and game development, and I also like I think I'm the same as you because I want to, like, if I try to make my own game, then I will try to try to figure out well what skills that I need to learn to to achieve that, and then I think um in my in my perspective I think uh the game development bootcamp is a bit more important because this is the part where you actually make the game that you can play on. And for the game design, you are learning different game design uh, concept and principle to design a game, but you may not have the ability to like make the whole game by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. This is that's the, true. This is the main difference from that. Yeah, and it's there's if you know the development skills, even some of these tools that you can use like Unreal and Unity, there's there's things within it um, like asset stores and things like that where you don't have to worry about um, like you can just bring in other things and you can basically utilize the tools for the designing side uh, sometimes a little easier than if you don't know the development skills. So yeah, if your goal is to kind of build your own game and it's important that you're kind of part of the building process, then development course would would 100% be better for you. Um, but if you look at it and you're like, oh, geez, I, I didn't realize coding was that. I, I'm not interested in it at all. Then you can still have a huge impact on your game and, and create the game that you want. You just, you're going to have to work with developers who can kind of, you know, do that, that side of it for you. So, and make sure that they, they stay true to your visions. Um, perfect. All right. Thank, thank you, Chris. Um, what are some places or situations where one could get started with networking and make contacts with people in the industry? Um, so that's a great question. I'm, I'm going to let you answer there too, Chris. Um, I mean, this, even today, like where you are right now is, is a great, great, it means that you're kind of connecting with people already. You're looking into the, this industry. Um, there's, again, there's probably a bunch of people in here that you could connect with, but, um, outside of that, I mean, if you join a boot camp, you're automatically brought into a network, but you can go, um, online, you can find different communities. There's, you know, different discord servers that are available. There's game jam opportunities. There's, there's tons of stuff, but, uh, Chris, did you have any, um, examples or anything that you would maybe share with them too? Uh, yeah, just, I have uh, mentioned this, like in the, in the Q and A with you before, like just trying to talk with other in the discord channel or, um, trying to join some game event, like the game jam, it is a really good experience to connect with others. And also one extra thing would be uh, maybe like really trying to find some uh, those game like public events outside um, you can join to try to meet more new people. I know like uh, in Toronto there is um, there is a game facts uh, game tech fest like a few weeks ago that you can attend to connect with different people. Yeah, this is that is an example on how you can connect with those people within the industry. 
Yeah, absolutely. And just look for those things online. There's probably even online versions of it too, that you can find throughout the world and just register. And, and there's, there's tons of opportunity for that. So, uh, perfect. All right. Now this is a question directly for you, Chris, yes. uh, what kind of, what kind of games do you want to make after graduating the bootcamp? Uh, do you want to shoot, uh, for working for a AAA studio or go towards, uh, indie studios once you, uh, or open your own studio rather with your classmates? Yeah, for now, actually, um, I would say, uh, before I joined the bootcamp, I really hope that I can make my own game and then maybe publish it on Steam or somewhere else. But as long like uh, as getting more deep into the course and then I am um, forget like thinking more about, um, yes, I want to make my own game, but uh, I still need to learn a lot more things to do that. So like according to my skills now, I can't make a, I can't make a game that I am satisfied with. I still need to learn a lot by maybe like doing my own game projects and um, partner with others to make other games or maybe like, um, yeah, of course it would be good for me to, to get a jump in those triple A studios and get more experience on that and trying to like get the skills that I want in this industry and trying to start my own game. Yeah. Absolutely. So like build up your skills, continue yeah. to, to grow on just, your skills. Just continue uh, and... learning and build up your skills. Yeah. That's uh that's always funny when, you know, when you start the course, like a lot of people can't build a game at all. And then by the end of the course, they've like built a game and they're like, okay, this is great. Now I want to go deeper and I want to, you know, I want to make it yeah, more yeah, realistic. You'll, and you'll I wanna... find that there's a very, very deep, uh, it's very deep for you to learn a lot of things. Yeah, you just want to keep going, which is uh, it's super common. So, uh, all right. So I don't have any coding experience before, and now I study business and marketing. I hope I could get uh, some intern uh, that about my major that I'm able to handle right now and could kind of relate to the game industry in the future. Is there a chance or suggestions? Let me read that one more time. So I don't have any coding experience. I'm studying business and marketing. You want to get an internship with your major right now. And could you, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Are you looking at like connecting with what you're doing right now in business and marketing with gaming? Is that um, what you meant there? Um, but uh, I mean, if, if your question is, is I want to work in gaming, I'm currently in business and marketing and I don't have any coding experience. Um, then you, you don't have to, if, you know, I mean, you could, you could start a boot camp with us. You could start a university course, like no matter what the case is without having experience, it's okay. You can, you can start with no experience, uh, but most, most certainly with the boot camp, it's, it's all beginner friendly. So if you were looking at joining the boot camp to kind of make a career change, then um, the boot camp will, will certainly teach you some skills, but I'm not sure if that's what your, your question was there. So I'm hoping I'm answering that right for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look and see if you add something else to it too there. Feel free to, to elaborate and add in a second part of that there. And I, I do apologize if I if we didn't answer it right there. But um, can you elaborate a little bit more on the differences between game design and game development? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I mean, the... I can I can answer for that. I think of one yeah. uh, simple example for the differences is um, comparing it to, to making an airplane or car. Like you will have the design, uh, the design diagram, or the or the or the picture that the whole design about the car or the vehicle of that. This is the part of the game design, trying to design what to include in the game and what your game should look like. But um, game development is the part that you really make it. Like um, you really are uh, doing those. Uh, do those mechanical parts, trying to make them, manufacturing them. This is the part where game development came in, trying to put those design to reality. This is the big difference. One is about designing and about um, gathering your ideas together. And game development is really making it the game so that you can play it yourself. Yeah, and uh, and coding with with the development that's a good, yeah. good diff differentiating factor because that goes with the the development that Chris was just saying there. So, um, okay, 
for the design bootcamp, would we uh, learn Unreal Engine? Uh, we would be learning Unreal Engine. Uh, once we learn this game engine, would it be easier for us to get into other game engines or would it still be like learning a whole new thing? Yeah, it, it would be easier. The important thing to note is that you're not going to be diving into development concepts through Unreal. So that one is a little bit different. So if you if you learn Unreal through design uh, and then you want to go in and do something in Unreal or in any other engine on the development side, it's not going to help you too, too much that way. Um, but it will help you with design uh, concepts through other other engines. So if you're, you know, basically they're all they're all different, uh, but they if you know one, it's certainly going to help you uh, understand how to navigate through the other one a little bit better. There's going to be some some things that kind of carry over. Some things might be named differently, but you can see that they kind of have the same function. So it's, uh, you know, learning Unreal will help you with other ones as long as you're kind of staying within the design umbrella. If that makes sense. Then, oh, it looks like this is the last one here. Uh, do, do any of the skills uh, we're going to learn let us enter mobile in video gaming? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. one of the examples that Tyler showed in the slide, the Monument Valley, is also the is also a mobile game that makes in Unity. So uh, you can do all those things in Unity and set up the settings to build on mobile, yeah, mobile video game. And I can't remember the exact stat in my slide, but I think it was or the most recent 1,000 top mobile games were actually made using Unity. So yeah. um, especially on the development side, uh, absolutely, you, you would be able to uh, to use those skills for, for mobile games, which are, are huge right now. So. so I'm still laughing. Tyler Staff has answered. My last name's Travis. <laughs> um, so I think that's it for the questions. I'm just going to have a quick look here and make sure... Um, Oh, I forgot to mention earlier too, we had some polls in here. I was uh, I was going to say, go ahead and fill those out. But uh, so if anybody did fill out the polls, uh, thank you. <laughs> I apologize. I forgot to mention it earlier. Um, oh, we've got a couple more questions just pop on here. Okay. So this is a clarification on the other one. So is there any internship position that's related to game and business that I could handle right now? I'm trying to learn game design or development, but I don't have the skills right now. I hope to get an internship that would be useful. Yeah. So I'd say... You'd have to probably start with developing the skills before you'd qualify for an internship to learn. Um, like internships are really good for people who are new in the industry and it will teach you a lot, but you kind of have to have the core level of, of skills before you would qualify for an internship. So something like the boot camp would be great because it would teach you the, the core skills and then you'd be able to kind of look at internship options. So that would be my recommendation if you're kind of doing something right now and you've got some free time, you know, up to 20 hours a week for something like the boot camp, then that would be a really good start to teach you the skills and then then look at options through internships afterwards. Um, I hope that's uh, that's kind of answering your question now. Related to game and business that I can handle right now, development or design. So yeah, and you'd also have to kind of decide if you're wanting to do development or design and which of those skill sets you're, you're a little bit more aligned with. So if you like, if you like coding and the development side, and the, the uh, Unity development course is probably the better one if, if you were looking comparatively. But um, yeah, so in, internships would just come after you have a little bit of the uh, the skills there, but they are meant for people who are a little bit new in the industry who still have quite a bit of learning to do. So um, I'm a composition student trying to get into video game music. Do you have any tips? That's really cool, first off. Um, we don't do anything with video game music, I don't think. Hey, there's nothing in the course yeah. course that overlaps with that, eh? You you won't make your own game music, but uh, we kind of teach like I kind of learn how to find those resources, like mm -hmm. where to get those BGM to put in our game. So I would say if you want to get into the video game music, maybe trying to research on um what platform you can like showcase your own music to them or even trying to build up uh, your own portfolio about the video game music so that the others can uh, feel your work or even open some commission that you can accept that you can trying to like make some game music for the others. Yeah, so it teaches you a little bit of uh, how to work with it, but it doesn't actually teach you yeah. um, it's not kind of creating it or... Yeah anything like that. So um, perfect. And, oh, one more popped up here. Uh, Josh, I have ADHD in my uh, in my educational institutions. I have aid for this. Does CircuitStream have any help? Uh, yes, yes, we do. 
our uh, student department works with all of our students. And if there's any, um, you know, learning uh, requirements or anything that's kind of outside of the normal curriculum, we work uh, directly with those students and and set up set it up so that it works for them. So, uh, Josh, uh, you would probably be connected with Erin on our team, and Erin would take really good care of you. She's amazing. So, um, so that's that. I think that's all the the questions here. I'm just look having a quick look back at the chat. Um, I'm from Calgary. I uh, find it hard to network in the gaming industry. Would my best chances be online? I would nearly want to work in the industry and be part of a team rather than making a game alone. Um, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's lots of opportunity. I mean, even in Calgary, uh, there's different sort of tech meetups that you could probably go to. Um, but I would, I would suggest online resources. Um, yeah, like would my best chances be online? Probably. Uh, join as many sessions like this as you can. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at making, uh, work in the industry and be part of a team rather than making a game alone, uh, there are some studio options in Alberta. I know there's a, a few located here, like I think BioWare is in Edmonton too, and we've got some in Calgary here, but in terms of the larger studios, um, some of those are located like Ubisoft is based out of Toronto and Montreal. Um, there is, uh, an EA game studio based out of Vancouver. So, um, there's certainly some large Canadian options if you're looking at kind of moving around eventually. Uh, but in terms of uh, right now online and then just looking at uh, some of the smaller studios located in this area too would probably help you quite a bit. Uh, I mean, feel free to pop by the uh, the Circuit Stream office anytime too if you want. We're, we're right downtown Calgary here. So, um, And then how can I get connected to uh, Aaron and One Eye? Uh, so uh, with One Eye, um, if you just reach out to the admissions at Circuit Stream, um, just... Uh, is asked to be connected with one eye and we can connect you through. And then uh, Aaron's our student outcomes, or sorry, not our student outcomes, our student support. So you probably would be chatting with her after you've registered for the course sort of thing. Um, but she's the one that would be taking care of you in that sense. So, um, but you can connect with one eye in advance if you have any questions there. Um, yeah, just reach out to admissions. We'll, we'll, we'll get you to the right, the right people here. So, all right. I think, oh, we had another one pop up. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Chris. Yeah, that's fine. Um, does this mean that all the jobs in the game industry must have programming? There's nothing even related. Uh, you don't. You don't have to have programming, um, but you know, you'd want to. Like, basically, if you're working in gaming, you most people would go down a route of either developing and programming or designing and kind of you know interaction. So it's. It'd be hard for you to break into the industry with no specific gaming experience or skills. You probably have some transferable skill sets, but you need to kind of apply that uh, or show that you understand that. So by taking like a boot camp, uh, you can prove to somebody afterwards that you actually qualify for an internship because you can say, hey, like, you know, I've I had some of these skills before, but then I took this boot camp and I learned these specific things. And now I'm, you know, I'm definitely qualified for your your internship that you have available. Um, if you haven't done anything in gaming previously, unless you were like coming from a software development background with really strong coding skills or like computer science, uh, and you'd never worked in gaming, you might still qualify for an internship in gaming at that point if you're looking on development, just because of the some of the hard skills that you would have. Um, but outside of that, my my biggest recommendation would be to develop some game industry specific skills first, and then try and take a look at the internship opportunities after you've done that. That's probably the easiest way to get in. Otherwise, you'll probably end up in applying for a bunch of internships and then getting kind of pushed out the door by people who have a little bit of experience uh, through boot camps or through university courses or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, um, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining the, uh, the session here today. Uh, we do run sessions like this quite often. So if you go to circuitstream.com, uh, at the bottom of the main page, there is an events tab. Uh, I don't think we have any lined up right now uh, for the next week or two, but we will be populating some in there uh, probably over the next week or two, showing you guys the upcoming ones after that. So uh, feel free to check in with that. You can go back uh, to any of the university pages that I shared early in the presentation. Uh, everything here is going to be recorded and sent out to you guys afterwards. So all the information I shared today, you can go back and uh, pause and play and click through the video and find any details that uh, that we, we uh, talked about. And Courtney shared the admissions at circuitstream.com there in the uh, the chat. So if you guys want to email that directly, you can. 
Um, just a quick reminder, there is the the 15% early bird and it's uh, available for another uh, couple of weeks here as long as we still have seats open. So feel free to let us know if you're interested in registering. Um, but all that aside, a uh, huge thank you to you, Chris. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join today uh, out of your free time here and share on your experience in the, uh, the boot camps. It's uh, incredibly valuable for everyone. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. I can see everyone saying thank you there, too. Uh, you can also add me, folks, if you want. Uh, I'm just Tyler Trapp at Circuit Stream. So if you find me on LinkedIn, you can absolutely add me there. Uh, but you otherwise, also connect with me. Like, uh, oh, yeah. should, I, should I try to share the link for my LinkedIn? Yeah. If you have your, your link there, please throw it into the, the chat, uh, Chris. We can yeah. People can connect with you there as well. I don't have mine handy, but yeah, if you just search Tyler Trap at Circuit Stream, yeah. I think there's only I'll share a uh, LinkedIn uh, link. You can connect with me if you want. Perfect there. Chris just threw it in the chat there too. So, so yeah, so connect with both of us. Uh, take a look at uh, our upcoming events, opportunities. Uh, Chris, I'm excited to see your pitch day project next yeah. week. And uh, maybe we'll have you back if that's okay, Chris, in like a, a few months when we do another session like this. And we can talk a little bit more about what your experience was like during pitch day too. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Have a thank fantastic you. day and uh, we will see everyone uh, later. All right. Cheers. Bye, everyone.